In this video, I'm going to talk about how to factor a polynomial by looking for either a sum or a difference of two things cubed. So if you remember from Algebra 1, we had that rule where if we had two things squared that were being subtracted, it would factor into the first thing plus the second thing and the first thing minus the second thing. Well, for cubes, if we're cubing two things, we actually have a rule for both the subtraction and the addition of cubes. So if we're subtracting two things cubed, that factors into the first thing minus the second thing times the first thing squared plus the first thing times the second thing plus the second thing squared. And notice that for the sum of cubes, it's a very similar formula. The only thing that changes for these are those first two signs. So notice that when it's a subtraction, a difference of cubes, the first sign is always the same, and the second sign is always opposite. For addition, the same rule holds true. The first sign is going to be addition, and the second sign is going to be subtraction. So let's apply that here. The issue with cubes is that sometimes it could be a little bit difficult to pinpoint where is a cube, because we don't always have that list memorized like we do for perfect squares. So if you don't recognize 64 and 125 right away as perfect cubes, you could try a couple numbers in your calculator, or a quick trick would be to go into your calculator and type in x cubed into y equals, and then go to the table. That will calculate what 2 cubed is, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, and so on. So it might be a good idea to have that table in mind as you're going through these perfect cube problems. So let's take a look at this. If I have 64 x cubed, I'm going to ask myself, what would I have to cube to get that whole thing? Well, to get 64, I would have to cube 4, and to get x cubed, I would have to cube x. So if I'm looking in this sum formula right here, that's what my a value is, 4x. For my second term, I asked myself, what would I have to cube to get 125? The answer to that is 5. So that's going to be my b value there. Once I know what those two things are, it's just a matter of substituting into the equation. So if we take a look at this right up here, it says that something cubed plus something cubed factors into that something plus the other something. In our case, it's 4x plus 5 times the first thing squared. So I'm going to be squaring 4x. Notice that I have it in parentheses so that I remember to square both the 4 and the x. Minus now, to connect them, a times b, or in our case 4x times 5, and plus b squared, or plus 5 squared in our case. So I'm just taking my first thing, which I'm going to call a, and my second thing, which I'm going to call b, and I'm just substituting them into this formula that I see up there. Let's take a look at a tougher example. So 27y to the 6th minus 8x to the 9th. To me, this looks like a difference of two cubes because I know 27 is a perfect cube, and I know 8 is a perfect cube. So I'm going to adhere to this top formula up here. I'm still going to ask myself, what do I need to cube to get 27y to the 6th? Well, I know I would have to have 3 because 3 cubed is 27. But the question is, what exponent would I raise y to to get y to the 6th here? Well, if I had y squared and I cubed it, remember that I would multiply those exponents to figure out how many y's I have altogether. So that's how I could get the y to the 6th there. So realistically, if you want a shortcut here, you could just take both of these exponents and divide them by 3 to figure out what's going to be in the parentheses. So for 8x to the 9th, I know 2 cubed is 8, and I would have to have x cubed, because I would multiply these exponents, to get x to the 9th. So now I've figured out what my a value and my b value are going to be, so I could substitute into the equation. So the formula says take the two things and subtract them. So y, 3y squared, 
minus 2x cubed. Then I take the first thing, this 3y squared, my a, and I square it. Notice again that I'm putting it in parentheses so that I remember to square both things, the 3 and the y squared, plus a times b, or 3y squared in this case, times 2x to the third, and my second thing squared. So plus 2x cubed squared. Again, these problems can get a little dense because sometimes there's a little bit of simplifying you need to do. I mean, look how many sets of parentheses we have here. So I'm going to rewrite that first binomial I have. There's nothing I could do to simplify there. But if I'm looking here, 3 squared is 9, and y squared squared is going to be y to the fourth because I multiply those exponents. Here I'm going to multiply the coefficients 3 and 2 to get 6. And usually I write my x before my y because that's how they appear in the alphabet. Then 2 squared is 4, and x cubed squared is x to the 6. So this right here is exactly the same as what we started with that difference of cubes, but we've changed it to a multiplication problem. So we've correctly factored it. If you wanted to check yourself when you're doing these, since they can get a little ugly with those exponents, just multiply the first binomial to these three terms here, and you should end up with the same thing. One word of advice is to be careful with these problems, as they don't always look like sums or differences of cubes to start off with. Take this example, 2m cubed plus 128. Neither 2 nor 128 is a perfect cube. However, if you take out that GCF of 2 first, you'd end up with m cubed plus 64. And I know that m cubed is a perfect square and 64 is a perfect square. So there might need to be a GCF or something that you need to do first before you can realize that it's a set of cubes. So for all of these problems, you're going to need to memorize these two formulas up here. One acronym that I think sometimes helps to remember the order of the signs is that the first sign is always the same as what you started with. The second sign is always opposite. And the last sign for both the difference and the sums of cubes is always positive. So I think to myself, soap, same, opposite, always positive, to figure out what order the signs go in for these formulas.